Hey, everybody. It's Boat with Societal Deconstruction Podcast. We're looking at episode 13, believe it or not. I'm coming at you from Central Florida, and it's a ripe 4.51 in the morning. We are night owls around here. And it's hot. We ask, we don't ask what time of day it is because we don't really care about time anyway. It's, you know, a societal construct. But we'll ask what time it is and we'll say, it's fucking hot out. Something like that. That didn't sound right. Hmm. It's hot. It's fucking hot. It's fucking hot here. Although today was only 91. I had a friend who lives in Illinois and he said it was 105 the other day. That sounds hot for Illinois. I didn't realize Illinois got that hot. But anyway, um, my guest this evening is God. I know. How did I get him? Hey, God, how you doing tonight? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Just chilling. I slept most of the day, so here I am, up all night. I don't have a regular sleeping schedule. I like to do what I want, how I want, when I want, what the fuck I want. And that's part of our attitude here at Societal Deconstruction Podcast. So anyone that likes to do what they want, don't want to listen to rules, that type of shit, it's perfect for you. Perfect podcast for free thinkers. What's going on, gang? What's up, guys? How you doing, God? Man, I'm chilling, living. You feel me? Just growing and enjoying everything that existence has to offer. Growing and flowing. Yeah, basically, man. It's been a it's been a it's been a dope little bit, man. Since the last time we spoke, I've actually had a couple of interesting things happen to me, believe it or not. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was uh I was kicking it on Twitter spaces earlier. I just happened I don't or X, my bad. It's called X now. Uh what, I don't Yeah, they, they rebranded a couple recently. Like the whole logo's X now and everything. All of Twitter? Yeah, yeah, just like within the last week, and the logo just updated on my phone. Like, I oh, just yeah. saw the update. Yeah, it's crazy. And I don't oh. usually use it. I'm banned off Twitter. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I made fun of Joe Biden once uh, on an old Only account. That, yeah, well, on an old account, and that account got suspended, uh, and my computer started glitching after that, too. But I made another one. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I used to... Twitter spaces is like, or X spaces is very similar to like Discord or Reddit talk. So I slid in and it was like Elon and it was like some guy named Vivek, which is, I guess, like a presidential, like it was like elites like that. Right. And somehow, like when I joined, my bubble was in like the top 500. So I guess the people watching could see. Right. And I'm sitting in there just chilling for a little bit, just listening. And then it dawned on me. Like I was like, wait a minute. Weird. I can, I was like, I'm smarter than these people. Like, I'm listening to them speak, and I'm like, oh, I, I was like, bro, what are they talking about? I'm, I'm like, because I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, I should be able to speak. I'm like, what are they talking? And then I realized I was like, wait, like these are this is Elon Musk and a presidential candidate and and all of these people. And I'm like, and I'm like, I knew I'm like most people. I'm like, bro, I that I now so now I'm just realizing like actually. That's- how That's smart nuts. I am. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I'd never been in a situation to I was because I started laughing like I couldn't I couldn't do anything but start laughing uncontrollably because for so like for such a long portion of my life I had people try to tell me that I was dumb, that I was stupid, and and then now like I'm in here with like like the best and brightest minds on the planet, apparently, right? And I start laughing because I'm like I'm I'm like I'm I was like if I was like, I would destroy all of these people. I was like, it would be a mass, it'd be a bloodbath. Like, if I came in there and started, like, discussing what they were discussing, like, the way that I would put people, I, it would have been a massacre. So I couldn't do anything but laugh to myself because I'm like, oh, my God. Are you, I was like, are you serious? I'm laughing because I'm like, this is where I've been. Like, this is this is the level that I've been. On. So now I'm, I'm just starting to realize, like how how far away from the general population that I actually am. So it's uh, it's yeah, been you're tripping. You're tripping. Yeah. That's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I um, I oh, I love Reddit. I get sucked into that. And um, I don't, I can't, I don't care for Discord. I guess I haven't tried to be on it enough. Um, I tried to go on it with somebody I was talking to a while back, and it, I couldn't find anything in there. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. There, I it's not. Hmm. I gotta mess with it. My a good friend of mine just started a group in there, so I should probably join and go in there. 
I'll mess with it, you know, give him some props because he's always joined my stuff. Yeah, it's not the easy. It wasn't or it took a learning curve for me to learn Reddit and Twitter because uh, I'm black. Right. And uh, uh, Reddit for me was easy. But uh-oh. in the black community, Reddit and Twitter aren't like made popular, at least in the spaces that I was at. Okay. So I, was, I did not I was, know that. Yeah, I always thought they were like nerd platforms or things for like geeks and losers or weirdos, right? Because that's what I was told. I think Uh, they kind of are, though. (laughs) Nah, I've met a lot of like Reddit and Discord have been some of like the craziest tools that uh that I've been using recently because there's so many people like I'm like nah bro like there's professionals who use like so I think it's like with everything like you kind of find what you're looking for and because yeah absolutely and on Reddit. I've made a lot of good friends on Reddit. It's unbelievable. I've never done a lot of like online chatting type stuff ever. And I got on Reddit because I was interested in a couple things that, you know, I didn't really have around here. And so I started talking to some people and I mean, I've made really good friends. Like I don't really go on Reddit that much anymore, but I still message, you know, I still text with these people and I've actually met a couple of them in person. Yeah. I mean, I met you on, I found, I found you guys through Reddit and not even like just even aside from that, it's like, that's where the world is now, right? Like, people say, oh, this is weird, that's weird, but it's like, bro, 10 years ago, Reddit and Discord barely existed. It's like, so, the natural evolution is now people are starting to connect with people not only in person, but through video games, through the net, like, it's, yeah. it's common, that's where the world is now. Well, nobody wants to leave their house anymore, you know? It fits in perfectly. Yeah, I mean... If I got somewhere to be, I usually try to only dip if I got, like, something to do. But, like, as long as I can, like, find myself entertained, I'm chilling. Me too. I love being at home. I love it. I'll stay here. I'll stay here for weeks on end and, you know, maybe go to a bank once or something if I have to. Hey, anybody listening, I I can be a homebody, but I can also, like, y'all never partied. Y'all never had no type of, like, being around me is, like, one of the greatest experiences, especially when I'm, like, in a mood like you know yeah. i said uh she in a mood like when i get to dancing and whatnot like bro i'm telling y'all n- no experience like this anywhere ever i can't dance but you know i'm a pretty good party experience myself um a lot of people have told me that in the past i did quit drinking about a year and a half well a year and a few months ago but um i'm still i'm still a good party experience i think maybe not yeah. as fun as when i was drinking but probably smarter you know a lot smarter i'm not a I'm not a huge drinker. I'm not the biggest fan of alcohol. I do drink, though. Like, don't get me wrong. But uh, when I, like, you would never be able to tell if I was drunk or not unless I'm, like, absolutely fucking floored and hammered. But for that, like, even when I'm absolutely hammered, like, you wouldn't be able to really tell because I've got really good awareness of myself. But uh, so, like, on the outside, it looks kind of normal. But on the inside, like, it feels like my mind is uh, speeding. That's it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I'm I also six time. two. I'm not that great with alcohol. Um, I'm not a very large person. I'm only like five four, and I'm you know I'm small, and um, I can't handle a lot of it. And it's like I would start drinking, and I'd feel really good. You know, you get that first couple of drinks buzz, and it's like, yeah, I'm vibing. I'm feeling great, having a great time. And then like my mind tells my body that, oh, you're having fun on this stuff. Keep drinking, drink, 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 drink. You know, so you know I'll drink and drink, and then I'll just be hammered like. There's no middle ground. It's like I'm just like slightly buzzed or fucking hammered. I think part of the pro or pro- part of the reason for that is like a lot of things that we've been indoctrinated to believe are drugs and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that they do is they kind of help you see through a lot of the bullshit, right? And because the whole world is basically bullshit, right? Like the indoctrinations, the systems, the rules. And, Absolutely, and, fuck that be- shit. Yeah. So like the things, the things that so things like weed and alcohol kind of well alcohol doesn't really help you see through that what i realized alcohol does is it it makes your mind move faster so people say it's liquid courage it's not that it's liquid courage it's just that like your mind moves like your problem solving skills improve right so it's like the quicker your mind works i gotta i gotta i gotta differ on that one i don't think your problem solving skills get better with drinking no fucking way well when i i mean maybe yours no, nat- natural, like, re- instinctual problem solving, not like, uh, not like, uh, like math problem solving. So, like, uh, they call it liquid courage because if you're courageous in a situation, it's because your mind's in a certain state, right? So, your body, like, your, your mind will react a certain way to things, right? And when you're on alcohol, it's similar to when you're, when you're drunk, right? Not like floored or hammered, but like when you have that level of drunk, right? You when you're like right people, there, like right there in the middle, yeah, your mind, your mind, like really good, cool. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, because your mind, your mind is processing the information faster. So that's what I mean. Like you're, it's working fast. So like your mind. I get what you're saying on yeah. that. See, yeah. That's so the area of... that I have a problem staying in, though, that's the area that I like is that <laughs> that phase of drinking. But it was hard for me to stay in it. I I always get to just hammer. Yeah, uh, Lil Wayne once said, it's not about what you walk away from, it's about what you walk away with. So when I started adopting that, like, principle, like, consciously, a lot of things changed. So now it's like, I, I love I love Lil Wayne. Yeah, I don't try for certain situations, like, I don't try for situations, you feel me? I kind of just, uh, don't, don't force anything. Yeah, and I and I and I kind of like to see like what do I get out of every situation, right? So, because that's what he says, it's not about what you walk away from; it's about what you walk away with. And that little thing will like, if you if you pay attention to what people say, it'll it, it can give you like a complete mindset shift. Like yeah. I was I was talking to my homie. Shouts to Ryan the barber from Arc Barber Shop, by the way. Shouts to Ryan the barber. You probably got to have Shouts him. Shouts to on Ryan here. the barber. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna put y'all in contact. Shouts to Ryan, bro. One of the most motivational people I know for sure. Anyway, Absolutely. I was. I was talking to him earlier about the book Rich Dad Poor Dad um, because he posted on his story. He's very consistent with like uh, he's very consistent. I like so shouts to him. Uh, and he posted Rich Dad Poor Dad. And uh, and I was like, bro, like the uh, the perspective shift that this book like gives people is uh, is ridiculous. And I was like, uh, it kind of makes you wonder what the world could be. If uh, governments weren't forcefully indoctrinating people to live in a way that benefited them, right? Or something along those lines. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, so did you cut your hair? Nah, so I don't know. Uh, I actually, I don't think I'm going to get my hair cut for a while. I've been doing, I've been, you guys call them freeform dreads. I just been you letting the dreads, grow. right? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Like them. They're cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they're really good. You have somebody uh, that does them though, right? No, nah, I just let it grow and wash it. Really? And it goes into dreads by itself? Mm-hmm. I mean, some, like sometimes like I, yeah, basically mine did. Some people no will shit. twist theirs a little bit. Yeah. It's like wool. That. It's like wool. That's cool. Yeah, it's very I similar. I dated a guy that had dreads down to, like, down to his waist. Ah, uh, well, some of them, some people will get them, like, actually worked on to where, like, you get a certain type of dreads. Like, freeform dreads, you can kind of tell apart from, like, dreads that are maintained, right? Because Yeah, main- I think his were maintained. His yeah. Were, like, separate, you know, like, separated. Yeah, if they're really clean like that, then very rarely will they be freeform. And, but, yeah, like, like someone like... Cool. They would hit me in the face sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Cole has free form, but uh, I don't know if he how much I don't know what type of maintenance goes into his hair or to his mane or whatever you guys want to call it. But uh, uh, Cole, I believe those are free form. J. Cole. J. Cole. Oh, J. Cole. Oh, J. Cole. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. I know his music. I don't really know what he looks like. Oh, that's crazy. Isn't yeah, he's he's a good looking dude. I mean, he I'm says he he says he's six four, so he's probably about the same height as me. Probably six two, or he could be six four. I don't take him for a liar, to be honest. Uh, okay, my guy. I like tall. I like tall guys. My guy with the dreads was six five. Nah, and he say he be okay. My current guy is six three, and I'm five four. I don't know why I like him so tall, but I do. Uh, I think part of it is because of uh the indoctrination, right? There's images that are that are given to people or a way of life that's given to people or even like societal like uh like standards uh that you indirectly feel that kind of say like these are the type of people you should be attracted to versus these type of people that could be a reason or it could just be maybe they just like bigger people make you feel more comfortable like it could be it like it could be a number of things to be honest i think Uh, it's like a sign of like like strength and power for me hmm I don't think all big guys are are powerful. Plus, I also I don't, don't believe. Not at all. Not at I don't all. believe. But it's just that I don't know. It's like that was what attracts me at first. You know, afterwards it can be like, eh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's definitely different types of strength as well, too. Because like you've got like mental strength, you've got physical strength, you've got like even in like physical strength, there's multiple types of physical strength. But like, uh, I think I prefer mental strength. Yeah, mental strength is very important, uh, and. Uh, luckily uh it doesn't really i don't think the frame your frame 
I mean, your frame definitely can affect your mental strength because uh, bigger people probably are more comfortable because they probably feel they can defend themselves easier against most people. So that helps with your and mental strength. And I think, strength. yeah, other people would like give, maybe give them more respect or treat them better. Definitely. They definitely get a little like better treatment, I think. I mean, I guess it's situational. Like, because I'm not even huge, right? I'm 6'2". Uh, 230 if we're looking at like a scale or whatever around that 225 230 and uh <laughs> you're like 100 you weigh like 100 pounds more than i do man that's crazy uh, i was 300 around covid time but like i wouldn't like you couldn't it didn't it wasn't like an unappealing 300 though because i guess because i'm 6'2 and also right. but uh I dropped it. yeah I always been crazy with my conditioning and stuff like that. To like, I'm like a, I'm like a. You can't tell by looking at me. You probably can't. You probably can now, but like, that's it. Which is even scarier. But like, you couldn't really tell by looking at me that like I was like a superhuman. Like I used to run full court pickup games like back to back to back, like a couple hours in a row, uh, without like drinking no water or nothing, and like. I didn't realize it till like one day, like my homies, like they were drinking. He's like, bro, have you drank any water? And I was like, I don't think so. Like my body's like always been superhuman. And then now, like, I don't know if you can tell now either. And it's like, I guess I look like a bozo is what people like tell me. Like, no, yeah, no one's used those words directly, but I, I guess like I used to or I appear to. I don't know like what it is. Like people used to say, I guess you look like a bozo. And I'm like. And then they, but then like once they see me perform, they're like, "Bro, what?" And I think like it's probably because I recognize like how great I am at the things that I do. So like I right. don't worry. Like I just yeah, I just be chilling, right? Would because you take no that the, the bozo comment as a compliment? Uh, I don't really hear it or pay it any attention to be honest. Like I well, guess yeah, you can no, take it I as mean, a compliment. They're, they're not saying it. Are they saying it as a compliment? Uh, I really think it depends on how you take it, right? Because right. I can tell you, I can tell you anything, and how you, I can, if I give you a hundred dollars right now, you're gonna choose how you spend that money, right? Right. So how you perceive anything is, you know, your choice. If I, yeah, if I speak something to you, then you can, you, it's up to you. You choose how you're gonna spend your time on it, right? So you can either, you can either make it something like see the, see the beauty and the value, in it, or you could let it diminish you, right? Like right. you get to, you get to choose how to spend it. You don't always have to spend it how people tell you to. Correct, correct. And that's a lot of a lot of the the difference in the world that people don't realize. You know, they just expect everybody to be the same. And every situation, everyone's gonna have a different perception of it. Every situation, someone's gonna have a different perception. And you know that leads to a lot of problems. And people just, if they understood that, there wouldn't be so many problems in the world. Man, part of it also, too, is like you get people who are genuinely really wise people who should be listened to, like Andrew Tate. However, the problem with that is like you can because you can still see a lot of the indoctrination and and the things that they say and how they how they think and how they believe and speak, because like I believe Andrew Tate is very entertaining. Like that's a that's a funny that's a, <laughs> that's a funny individual. Right. But uh, he says some things that I'm like, bro, like listen to yourself speak like uh just the i guess the the indoctrination is just something that is like uh really evident in uh in the way a lot of people behave and and, and think and it's like is it terrible know, that i don't know who he is <laughs> andrew tate oh yeah. uh no nah, not really is he uh, a comedian or so i just i've been i've been hearing his name for a while and i just like got to the point where i was interested enough to like learn a little bit about him but i let it come to me naturally so i guess he was a kickboxer or or i believe he was a kickboxer and then somehow became like i guess a hundred billionaire like a hundred million I, I i don't know i guess he's like a really wealthy individual um and uh he has really People would consider some of the things that he says radical takes, right? But they're not radical takes. Like, he speaks very true and realistic stuff. He really does. Like, if you listen to him speak, like, a lot of the things that he says um, are correct, right? But also, he has, like, what they call, I guess, an alpha personality, like, almost like a textbook definition, but, like, in his own kind of spin. So he had, but, like, so. But you so, have an alpha personality. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I would say so. I believe I do. 
Uh, maybe I don't know. But uh, so anyway, yeah, he uh, he says oh, uh, for that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he says my bad. He says some crazy stuff. Uh, he said, "Who is he though?" Um, and I guess I guess uh, Serbia, Russia. What's scary about the world is it's like you never know if what people's telling you is true or not, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a lot. So I guess he was chilling in Romania or something like that and at a pizza spot. And he's a very powerful individual, very influential, very, very outspoken. Right. Uh, he's he's pretty well known amongst like kids and teens and they, they listen. And I guess like other people, too. Well, that explains why I don't know. Who he is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think. Well, no, nah, he'd be it's weird. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like everybody knows him, but nobody anyway. Uh but they they arrested him for like like him and his brother I guess for like sex trafficking or human trafficking or something. Oh goodness! And he was in jail for like a month, and I guess it was a huge thing. But it's like what's 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 scary is too is it's like we have no clue if that's true or not. People just like automatically trust what the government tells them or trust what the news people tell. Like Romania, yes. like all of these people, like like they could have. He's 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 essentially almost like a king right when you get to a certain status like you be technically money, you're, you're yeah. like a king right so uh like they really could have just like kicked the door in because they have more power than him and like placed him in prison because they wanted to like and they could have sold any type of story like but they also yeah, I need to start watching people. some type of news um i don't watch the news and i don't watch tv so i'm a little out of the loop especially for someone doing a podcast i should probably have a little no, more knowledge of that type of I stuff don't, but. So I kind of like being in the dark of that shit. I I don't need to know all that crap. I don't really watch. I don't really watch uh, TV, uh, or the. I don't really do a lot of. We were talking about it all the uh, time, and it's kind of you know it's all kind of fake. Yeah, like including the news. I be so yeah. I scroll like occasionally through Instagram, and I be I don't know how I get this information. People talk to me. People tell me like I don't know. Yeah. I be getting it like however yeah. it comes. Well, that's why I like doing my podcast and talking to people. I get a lot of information from people, and I think when we're having an authentic conversation like this, the stuff that is told to me is most likely probably true. I mean, I can't. I'm not a very trusting person anymore. Yeah. I used to be, but I, <laughs> I I don't bother with that anymore because it you know doesn't always pan out. Um. So most of the things I think that I'm told are probably, you know, probably mostly true. And I think that it's, I'd rather have an authentic conversation with somebody than just watch a box with some people talking about a bunch of fake bullshit that, you know, you know, I, I don't know. It's not for me. Yeah, no, I try to, uh, and I'm, and I'm getting better, but I try to generally like speak things that can't, can't be argued with. Right. Like I yeah. genuinely try to speak the truth, but the, I, I used to get a lot of resistance because, uh, it was the truth, right? And I could like so people's indoctrination, like it was, it felt like just fighting like one giant hive mind. Like everybody spoke the same and b- believed the same because the, you guys had all been indoctrinated by the same. Don't say thing. me. Don't say you guys. Well, oh, so, them. Well, no, them. Yeah, give me, yeah, it'll pan. It'll pan. Uh, but so then, uh, and that was in the past too. But also, you could rec. I could recognize in different cultures, like speaking with different cultures of people, uh, just. The, would behave slightly different based off of like, oh, this person wasn't indoctrinated by America. They were indoctrinated by the Netherlands or Romania or right. Los Angeles. Like, Don't you I find that so like, interesting, though, what their what their views and how they behave and the indoctrination of their culture? I When I travel, I just I find that stuff so interesting. I don't know. I kind of grew up like that, too, because uh, if we're looking at the system, like I was a military brat. Right. So growing up, I had family in the military. So we moved around a lot, and I lived in a couple like different states. Lived in another country a couple years what ago. Other I went to, uh, Germany. A couple years ago, I went to LA, or I was in LA for a little bit. Uh, and so I've always just I've always been exposed in, to different, like extremely drastically like different changes in climate and in behavior. And uh, but there's still a like a baseline similarity. Uh, on how people think because uh, America indoctrinates a very large portion or a very large amount of people. And then like federal government, I guess I should say, has like what they want to put out that's like required. And then the states also have their versions. And then you have the individuals who interpret it like how, like however they want you. So. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you think the United States, well, we probably don't. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Societal Deconstruction with Bo and God. And that is, um, how are you doing, God? Chilling. Um, that was a snippet of one of your songs, Think About Love. Think About Love, yep, that's the yeah. one. I like that song. Thank you. Yeah, I liked all your music. I was playing it for uh, my friends over earlier, and she liked it. She's like, he's not famous yet? No. <laughs> Yeah, she really dug it. We listened to yeah. her song. Yeah, uh, it's really, it's really good. Uh, I mean, I guess not famous in the system, but I mean, my name the is... The universe, pretty, you probably are. I'm pretty famous regardless. <laughs> so, um, where can everybody go to find your music? Wherever you listen to music, you go to Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, YouTube, uh, Amazon Music. You just you can type in my name, God, or you could type in Burn Your Maps. That's the project uh, that I just that I just released. Uh, when did you release it? May the first. May first. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Were you excited? Uh, nah, cause I, I mean, it kind of just happened. Like it really just put itself together. Uh, I forget what I was doing, but I ended up like talking to a guy that I know at like the end of February or like the beginning of March or maybe around like February or March. Um, and then he, he like, he was like, bro, you probably should just, just drop a project or something. And I was like, that's a good idea. So then I put it together really like in a pretty quickly i guess but like how long did it take you uh not too long uh i think i got all of the songs done i mean it was at first it was supposed to be like seven songs but i felt creative and then it went up to 14 tracks right wow um, that's a lot man it's a it is a it is a decent amount of songs i guess like and it's like really good too and it's like the appearance of it the way it's put together like people it has the appearance of an album right like people have been like you dropped an album. but cause, like music people are like bro you dropped an album like i thought you were smarter than that because like most people don't leave with albums it's like a goofy thing to do but it's not an album right like it's 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 not technically speaking an album because it's like yeah but it, so it's not te- it's not technically an album but like it has the appearance and the feel of an why, album why is it not technically, technically an album Oh, uh, there's just like a lot of like jargon, uh, and and yeah, there's just like a lot of there's just like a, a lot of, of of jargon, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so I'm an just album like I don't know, and I'm yeah. sure the listeners don't know either. So yeah, so on an album, clarify. yeah, on an album like with so with albums specifically, like you're usually all of your samples are cleared um that's that's like basically the big part is like clear who clears them like the, the producers uh sometimes it's not even just up to the producers like sometimes a producer will like put a sample in a beat um and you still have to get it cleared with whoever like owns that sample or owns that like because they could use a sample of like uh an old Michael Jackson song or something like that. And just because the producer put it in the beat doesn't mean that it's clear. So you still have to get it cleared by whoever owns its publishing or whatever it is. Okay. Do uh, a lot of them clear it? Uh, I mean, I would assume so. I mean, because 
I guess, like, I don't know. It's really up to them. And it depends on, like, what type of sample it is, too. And it also, like, depends. Like, producers have, like, kits and things. Like, so uh, for lower level, level stuff, like, I'm sure it's as simple as, yeah. But, I mean, if depending on what sample, what type of sample it is, like, you, you, it, it really depends. Like, do you it, have to pay? Do you have to pay them for the rights to music? Uh, I, I, it really depends on your relationship with whoever, like, there's not one, just like anything else, there's not, like, one set answer. So, like, if I right. were to tell you yes or to tell you no, like, it would be a disservice because it wouldn't be true. Because everything, situation. Yeah, like, it, it, a lot of it is situational and, like, yeah, uh, your relations that you carry with people. Yeah. So, uh -huh. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, and one thing you told me earlier that I, I had no idea that they call a single a record nowadays. Yeah, a lot of people are referring, like, if you tell someone, like, hey, I just put out a record, a lot of people will perceive that as, like, just, like, one song. But then you've also got that group of people who, like, a record is, like, a CD, right? Or, yeah, or a like the older, project. you know, the older generations, probably. Like, that's what I would assume. Yeah, I think it's varying. It just depends on uh, what certain people grew up around or what type of societal or influences or what type of influence they, they've had around them like societal or not uh it, it, yeah it's uh it's dependent on area culture too like there's a it just depends yeah. i think so often a lot of people like kind of i don't want to say get blinded but like it's very easy to like get caught up in like where you are or how like you live in your regions or whatever and forget that like uh culture changes as you even like a block away or your, your like your neighbor's house like uh but out of sight out of mind right yeah i used to love albums when i was a kid i remember sitting in my my living room and going just going through my dad's albums and looking at all the taking them out of the sleeve and looking at all the lyrics and you know i just like stroke those things i love them <laughs> they were cool <laughs> that's um, crazy i want to talk about your new single coming out yeah forever it's forever crazy. Forever. forever by god you guys you gotta check it out it comes out on monday the 31st of july yeah that's the day hmm? 2023 yeah that yeah that's what uh that's what they're calling it these days and that's the day we re we're releasing this podcast too so it'll be you'll hear the podcast and then you can go right to um anywhere you listen to music right and hear the single yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty good one. I think everything that I do is is pretty good, just because uh, I don't like it's just who I am. Yeah, like, you're you. Basically, yeah, I care about what I do. Absolutely. Um, I care about the things I do. What was I going to ask you? Oh goodness. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, are you playing any live shows? <laughs> Uh, I actually, yeah, it looks like, it looks like I got a show coming up on the 25th, a little performance in the books for the, on the 25th, uh, August? yeah, 25th of August. So that, uh, that should be, that should be fun. If, uh, if you've never had the chance to even be around me in person, right? Like just even being around me is a good experience, especially like if you're chill, right? Cause I'm pretty chill. Yeah. Uh, you're a fun time. But thank you very much uh but like to to have me like jumping up around and dancing is like a whole another thing but then like when i'm like that because my like my presence my existence in itself is like is a performance right like is a masterpiece everywhere i'm at right so like and that's just me living and then like so seeing me perform with like a little more intent it's a beautiful experience uh people really seem to enjoy uh watching me perform so if you haven't seen me perform live yet, perform yet, or it's coming up. I want you to do the live stream. Are you still thinking about doing that? Yeah, I'll see. That's yeah. I, like now that you mentioned it again, I'll uh, I'll see what I can. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. Let me talk to a couple of people and see if we can get that going. Yeah, everybody. If he gets that live stream hooked up, you can all watch him on um, August twenty fourth. Uh, twenty fifth. 25th. Oh, dang it. Sorry. I was going to say 25th and I second guessed myself. Ha. I should go with my first 
gut feeling. I, I know that. Um, so yeah. August 25th, guys, we'll, we'll let you know if there's a live stream and you guys can all tune in and watch them. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, God with his new single, Forever. Hell yeah, it's a good song. Absolutely. Um, now, what do you think your main message of your music is? My main message, I don't know. Be you, relax, chill, be observant, be yourself. Don't believe everything everybody tells you. Everything that glitters ain't gold. For real? Uh, I, yeah, basically. That's awesome. It's a good message. People need to learn that stuff. You know, I always say, you got to live for yourself. You got to stop worrying about what other people think and what other people do. You know, you just live for yourself and do what you want. Have intentions. And, you know, you're born alone, you die alone. You're not going to take anybody else with you. You just got to try to be happy yourself and do what you want. Do what you want, when you want, how you want. Don't listen to all the bullshit. Don't do everything everybody else does. Yeah, it's difficult. Part of it, the indoctrination that we spoke about, but another part of it too is, I mean, it kind of falls back to the indoctrination. It could be a byproduct, but uh, uh, when you see people being themselves when you're growing up, and especially in the American social structure in schools, right? Uh, American internment camps. Yeah. Uh, when, societal training camps. Basically, yeah, yeah, societal training camps. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, no, it's a good one. Um, but whenever you see people expressing themselves or being themselves, not only do they get picked on by other children, but I think a lot of that also is because when you're young, when you when you're little, uh, if you're if you if you speak out if you show any type of freedom, what do they do? They you get in trouble, right? You get scolded, and they make yeah, you, you go to detention. Right. And they put that. So that's like public humiliation. They're publicly shaming you. So the onlookers are like, don't behave like don't behave like this. Right. Like they see they see what gets you in trouble. They see what gets you looked at negatively. Right. And a lot of times it's just expressions of freedom or or basically expressions of freedom. Right. Because it's like if you if you question the knowledge, like teachers have been made to feel or teachers, parents, whoever, bosses, have been I don't know so much about what well, bosses too yeah in their own right but uh have been made to feel as if like they're superior beings or entities right who cannot be questioned and they're so, not we are all equal right on police we officers we're not all the same judges the lawyers press all of you guys have been made to believe yeah. like it's crazy like you guys have been you guys have been you guys have been all made to believe that like you're you're so much more superior and smarter than 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 what you guys are Right. A lot of people so, have made you feel like they're they're um you know insignificant and not as good as other people, and that's just so unfair. Right. We all so, come into this world, yeah. world the same yeah. damn way. Yeah, expressions of like like we just saw expressions expressions of freedom, uh, are you are are seen as um they're they're seen as a. Uh, not, not nothing good. They're not seen. Yeah, they're seen. They're seen as like terrible acts in a society yeah. that doesn't like. So it's like, ask yourself, you like, to terrorists now, don't you? If you, but, like, yeah, you like, look at what they the do. government. Yeah, and it, so and they start teaching you that from the moment they place you into their school schooling system or education system or like their schooling system, right? They're well, training. You said something about the kids. Yeah. It really got to me because this this happened to me as a kid. I remember trying to make myself be normal because I was a weird fucking kid like when I was oh. little I was I wanted to be a boy when I was little I wanted to be called bud I told my mom I was pregnant with a baby horse I would wear my shorts and my barn boots around and I wouldn't wear a shirt in the summertime because my uncle and my cousin Steve and Eric didn't get to wear didn't have to wear shirts I didn't want to wear a damn shirt you know I was a strange kid and so once I get into the school that you know societal training camps and all that shit uh internment camps <laughs> I love that shit um yeah this is just great <laughs> you know, I found myself feeling weird around everybody and everybody acted the same. And I'm like, these kids are like fucking robots, you know, and then I would get treated weird and I didn't like feeling that way. And I remember training myself to be more like them. And I wish I would have never done that. That just stifled my creativity. It stifled my personality. It, it's a lot. Like it takes your, it's like your, it takes your mental space. You take your mental space, which is so precious, which is so precious. Right. For real. And you're, you're giving it, handing it by force or by choice to some, a lot of times it's like, 
it's by force, but it seems like it's by choice because it's just the natural way to do. But you're handing over your the keys to your like mental to somebody else and they fill it with things that are going to be beneficial to them. Right. It's like. So you they now they're now like basically in control of you because now they can control how you see the world. They can they they can give you whatever information they can feed you what they right. what, what they're they like want. An empty shell and they want to fill it up. Basically, and it's like it, it's so hard for people to grasp because that's the way that like if, if everybody could see it, then it wouldn't have any strength to it. Right. It's like and it probably wasn't always like that, but like things want to stay alive. Right. Like things evolve to get better. Like so you notice a pitch or a flaw and then like you find a way to overcome that. Right. So things get better. So it's gotten to the point where like people can't even really recognize it uh, because because it's that it's that efficient. It's that smooth. So the fact that like I, I can speak this out and most people in a way that I believe most people can understand what I'm saying is even like crazy. Right. Because it's uh, going to get to a lot of people. I think right. people really think about this. People really think about what he's saying because it's true. No, we didn't come out with all this shit in our heads. This was all put into our heads. Why? For control. To keep, you know, to keep us separated as races. To, you know, control us. To keep us down. I, I don't know for sure if, like, the whole reason was for control, but, like, you can clearly look at I life. Think it was. and no, Well, you can clearly look at life and tell that people have definitely found ways and people definitely use it for control. I don't know if control was its main intent, but you can clearly tell that people use it for control. Like, and, and to dispute that would to, 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 would just, I, you're probably under control or you just don't care enough to like, but you can clearly tell people use it for control. And who's, yeah, it's difficult to measure. So one thing I was curious about, you you said you were um, in the, you were in the military, but you're, your parents, one of your parents, one of your parents was in the military? Uh, Well, they both were, but they weren't together. Like, So they were both, I don't know if they met like in the military or like they just both happened to end up in the military, but it wasn't a two, it wasn't like, it was just with one parent, so. Which military were they in? Which branch? Uh, One was in the army, one was in the Marines. One may still be in the Marines, to be honest. Like, oh, wow, that's crazy, that's cool. So you traveled around a lot when they got moved to different bases and stuff. Yeah, I yeah, uh, basically. Uh, Did yeah. you enjoy Germany? Yeah, I mean, Ger Germany was cool. Um, it was on base a lot, but even like the things off. I mean, it's always interesting being in of it, but like, but yeah, Germany was cool. They had like bakeries and stuff. Uh, yeah. Man, I, I pretzels and stuff like that. Huh? Bavarian pretzels and stuff like that oh no, croissant not like a bakery yeah they had pretzels and stuff too but they had cakes and like uh these like butter, butter, oh, butter, yeah. or butter croissants well yeah but german chocolate cake is heavy we would mainly go like early in the morning uh because uh it was before uh it was like we had to we had to we had to go to a babysitter um, or, or maybe sometimes there was like an early PT or something or like dropped off before they dropped off before like daycare and school or things like that. There was multiple reasons, but like, so it would be early, um, typically. And then I think maybe occasionally, I don't remember. I feel like they used to close early, but I feel like if you caught them right, you could catch them midday a, a, a couple of times. If I, I'm sure if I put like more brain power to it, I could remember, but not, nah, uh, and then I remember being able to like walk, uh, from one babysitter's house to a to another, like with my suitcase and like on the main roads and stuff. But like their 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 streets are a little bit more. They're a lot more friendly. For they're a lot more pedestrian friendly than than a lot of the places in the United States. And I remember uh, I there were gardens. People. I feel like a lot of people may have had. There was a, there was. Well, I don't know if a lot of people had gardens, but like the, these people had a garden, and uh, they made like. They made, I feel like they made their own jam and stuff like that. And like, because I remember yeah. they made me, they put the, I, to this day, I've never had like bread and jam like that. And they gave me like, I feel but like it was so fresh what, with this oh, drink. It was man. crazy, man. It's like, yeah. So when I was I, a kid, we had a huge different. garden. It was different. Huge, United States. Garden. And my mom used to do all that. She'd make homemade jam and jelly. She can freeze all the vegetables. Like, are you, oh, was that a, like, is that East Coast or what? Because I feel like, I feel like the East Coast 
would probably do that because the East Coast is 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 more closely related to the European roots, yeah. right? They're, so they're yes. the early settlers. So I we're grew up like, in Western New York State. Okay. Yeah. Our yes, garden was like an acre. Yeah. I mean, our garden was huge. We grew everything. We grew onions and potatoes and carrots and peas and beans and pumpkins and corn and man, like yeah, that everything feels like the we East Coast. Because the of. East Coast, like you got New England, right? You like you guys are based, so a lot of traditions have been carried down and fresh. Yeah. And, it was yeah. just so good. It was so good. The thing I remember the most is sitting in the garden with my mom picking peas, fresh green peas, which are so good and they're so hard to find. You can't hardly no. find them anywhere. But so, I remember hardly any of those peas would get in the bowl because I would sit there and eat them so fast. Man, I used to snap green beans, but that was back in the States. Like, uh, yeah. that was, and they like, but I don't know if they were fresh or not, but like, we used to snap if green beans. If you were snapping them, they were fresh. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. They're good too. I love the beans too. Man, yeah. Germany was cool. Germany was. Yeah, especially, like, away from, like, the Americanized, like, the military base was one thing, right? Because that's, like, uh, it's still the American system, so, like, the indoctrination is similar. But, like, outside of the, the gates, because it was actually, like, fenced in, right? So it was basically a prison, haha. Uh, <laughs> but, How uh, old were you when you were over there? Uh, man, I want to say somewhere between, like, man, if I, I could do the math right now, and I really don't want to. Um, but that's okay. I was curious if you learned the language. Like, nah, because uh, so I know, still know a couple of words. I believe I was in like uh maybe the second grade up there at kindergarten. Okay, uh, she's young. Yeah. Uh, but um, soaking so much stuff at those those ages, you know. That's but I uh, yeah, yeah, man, I still remember. Like, I still remember. I try to tell people like you have no idea the like the little things that you do that impact people. I still remember sitting in the uh, I believe her name was Miss English, right? I still remember sitting in her class, right, and uh raising my hand and not getting called on for things like uh like interesting interesting stories because I remember like two things like a lot of things specifically, bro. And I'm like as a as a kid like looking back, I still re or I guess I don't really care if that like had any trauma, but like I just think it's crazy that I can my memory is amazing. Like I, I can still remember the setting and like I can tell you the question and exactly how it made me feel. So it's crazy. Just I can remember, remember a lot of things from yeah. being a kid too. The thing Looking that I down. don't remember is like yesterday. I don't know what the fuck I did yesterday or the day nah. before. But I can remember way back. Like one of my friends knows he remembers the plot to like every movie ever made ever. And he always asks me, Well, do you remember this movie? I'm like, No, I, I don't even know if I watched it. But then if he talks about stuff like, you know, E. T. or you know, 16 Candles or, so you know, stuff that was back in the 80s or whatever when I was a kid. And I remember those totally. <laughs> so weird. I guess we got things that everyone's got things that stick out to them for sure. Uh, yeah. But I can't I mean, tell you what movies I've watched in the last 20 years, 30 years. I have no idea. I mean, a couple well, of them, but not many. I'm not, huge, I'm not a huge movie individual. I like Me neither. The, the, the Outsiders. The Outsiders is a is a pretty. The Outsiders good. is awesome. I read that book too. We read it in high school. Yeah, The Outsiders is pretty good. I forgot about that one. I love that one. Pony Boy, your golden Pony Boy. Man, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it was a good book. Because I, I think I was introduced to that. And he gets and, uh, all burned and everything, and that's what I'm. Yeah, he yeah. Dies, I think. Yeah, he yeah he did actually. Oh, middle school so was crazy. That's what, I think I was introduced to that in middle school. Um, I think Miss Kim was my seventh grade English instructor, headmaster, whatever oh, you want to. Floyd, I think his name was Mr. Floyd. Who? No, Mr. Oh. Uh, in sixth grade, my English instructor, headmaster, his name was Mr. Flanagan, Bill Flanagan. Uh, bro, I remember one day, so right, I'm sitting at the cafeteria lunch table, me and my homies, and I really fucked with Bill Flanagan, right? Like, yeah. I like. He was someone I kind of like respected. Growing. He was cool, right? And I remember like, so I'm kicking it at the lunch table, eating my lunch, and it's me and two of my homies all have him in the same class, right? At the same hour. And he told a story about like how he thought his grandfather's toes looked like uh, corn chips. What are those corn chips called? By What are they? Fritos. Uh, and I remember like, so we're eating, and then like one day we're <laughs> at the lunch table. Smell like Fritos. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. So we're at the lunch table and I point and I'm like, bro, look, he's eating his grand, he's eating his uh his dad's or grandfather's toenails. 
And then, like, my homie next to me, like, tell, retells him the joke. And then bro comes over to the table and gives, like, both of them. I could tell you their names, but there's no reason to tell you their names. But, like, both of them, like, uh, a, like a, a handful of chips. And bro just looked at me and left. And I, I was like, I didn't want the chips, but I'm like, damn, my nigga, that's crazy. Like, it's one because, like, why would you do that? Like, if it's us three all next to each other, and then it's like, not only that, like, bro, you know you got us. I'm like, shit, that's crazy. I remember looking at this dude like, bro. But yeah, Mr. Flanagan, Bill Flanagan. The guy was My guy, I remembered. He, he was Mr. Fuse. Fuse. Mr. Man, I had a crazy math teacher. He, he broke cool. the overhead projector and tried to, like, blame me. Bro, this dude had anger issues, and this is crazy. <laughs> I had Mr. Miller. He was my math teacher. When I first, when I started drinking, I went to the, the, the bar, like the town bar. I was probably 14, 15. I, they were Bro, me. speaking I was stoked, of drinking you know? and being in school. Light bottle, and I see him at the bar and he just looks at me and I'm like, fuck. He didn't speak, say nothing. He didn't say nothing to nobody. He was cool. Speaking, uh, yeah, it's cool when people mind their business. Like, sure. But like, it, they only behave that way because they've been programmed like to follow a system right that doesn't exist but like anyway speaking of drinking and in school and stuff too also the indo- or like the instruction and indoctrination that they the perspectives that they give you on certain like substances i remember they told us like if you drink alcohol you'll be a five-year-old for like the way like the way that they force you to like look at things is so unrealistic like i remember it, them saying that your maturity level will stop you'll never get more mature yeah from the once you start doing drugs, you yeah, mature, that will be your maturity for the rest of your life. Yeah, bro, that shit like that shit scared me for so long because I remember. But that makes me I, a nut, huh. I was kicking it. I was kicking it with my uh baby, with my babysitter's son. And we was in, it was in Germany, right? And, like, they had, like, a beer. And I remember, like, I took a couple, like, it was pretty tasty, too. It was kind of sweet. And yeah. I don't, obviously, I didn't get drunk. But at the time, right, like, because the way they make you look at alcohol, you think, like, you take two sips and you get drunk. And then you realize, like, once you actually start, it's like, oh, no, like, two sips. like. And they don't but, do that in Germany. They don't have the attitude that we do here yeah, about it, right? Man, yeah, I mean, they still kind of hit it. Like, it probably wasn't as big of a deal, but uh, I, to, for them, maybe not. I don't know. But he was, like, Filipino, so they don't really, like, I don't think it was, regardless, like, we all, like, it was, like, to be cool type deal. So I'm, I think there was still, like, a, a viewpoint of they shouldn't have been doing it because, uh, like, I even, like, took a puff on a cigarette. I don't, I'm not a fan of cigarettes, to be honest. Yeah. I used to uh, I quit. Thank God. They were so nasty. Yeah. I like, even if I wanted to, like, even if I wanted to, like, be a smoker of cigarettes, I couldn't, I couldn't put myself through. Like, I don't I get don't like, like being I, around them anymore. They're just, they smell like shit. Bro, I'm telling you, I've tried a couple, I've tried a couple cigarettes in my life. Like, less than, I've probably smoked less than 10 cigarettes. That's good. Yeah. In my I smoked, life. I was a smoker for years, but I was never a heavy smoker. <laughs> And I used Maybe to like two or three alcohol. Like I just, but it's always a struggle. I'm like, bro, how do y'all do this? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that's crazy. I was like, you guys, like, inhale this, or you guys like puff on like, and you can feel what it's doing as you. And I'm like, bro, y'all are crazy. But it doesn't even get you a buzz. I mean, it's pointless. Man, I mean, I like the menthol one that I tasted, but still, I'm like, bro, like, I, like, I tried to smoke a cigarette to see if I could, and I couldn't. I was like, bro, like, how, how, I was like, there's no way. It's just, fuck that. I think I did cigarettes for pure, weed? I'll pure smoke pressure. Weed, like, but I, I don't even like, like them. When I tried them, I did not like them. I honestly, yeah. I did it under pure, pure pressure to be cool. So stupid. So stupid. Uh, but even now, these days, like, I don't really, like, I'll smoke, a, like, a blunt occasionally, but I, I really don't even like using, uh, uh, like, tobacco leaves, like, to, like, I prefer, like, papers, right, cleaners, like, I'm not, because I'm not a huge fan of, like, nicotine and tobacco. And I'm but not I would, a fan like, of cigars. And they kind don't of get me wrong, Woods. Like yeah. yeah, but the thing is, is, like, I would never know, I would never know, like, 
experience is so important. I, I would never know these things if I didn't go out and try them and experience them for myself. A lot for of people sure. can't say these. A lot of people have no right to speak on things because they don't have the experience, but they just listen to the indoctrination or like preach. They just regurgitate what they're given without yeah. experience. But it's like, nah, because I smoked, I've smoked, I've smoked a couple cigars, right? And it's like, I would smoke a cigar again, like, because they're not they don't they're not as harsh as cigarettes and if you're around like food then it's cool right because nicotine makes my stomach feel funny uh and and but i have i haven't smoked a, a cigar in a while so like the experience would be different so but uh because sometimes i don't care for cigars either i think they're real hard yeah. but yeah like i would occasionally like but yeah way i'd smoke a cigar way before i would smoke a cigarette though. Like, think about I, how like, many people tried cigarettes like that you know, did them, smoked them for peer pressure, mainly to be cool. And then got hooked on them, you know, smoked them till they, you know, they killed them. It's so stupid. It's so Mom. dumb. But um, that's just, that's crazy. That's nuts. I, I can't believe that I did it. But I, at least I wasn't a heavy smoker. Um, yeah. I sound right now like I smoked 100 cigarettes. I had a little case of, I was really sick for the last two weeks. And I had a case of laryngitis. I couldn't talk for like four days. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm still coming back from it. So I sound like a <clears throat> a little help. So, what do you do? Um, how did you end up back in Kansas City? Because that's where you were born, correct? Uh, I was born in Can in the state of Kansas, like what you guys consider to be Kansas, uh, in a small town called called in a, yeah, in a small town called Emporia. Um, what was it Emporia? Yeah, it's a pretty. I mean, the it's it's bigger now, right? So there's thirty five thousand people there now because Emporia State University, so they have a D two college campus, but like okay. still a small town. That's a good amount of people. Yeah, thirty five k. It's rural. It's a rural area. It's. I grew up in a really really small town. Smaller, yeah, I think smaller than that. Yeah, I'm sure I can still partially kind of understand that. Uh, totally but, different uh, mentality. Yeah, even like. Yeah, they're like the time period is a uh, the time period. I, it feels like small towns. You further back in time. Yeah. So like, whenever I hear whenever I hear people who were born in like the the eighties, or like the eighties, like yeah, like the 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 late eighties, early nineties, or like mid eighties too. Like I can still relate to a lot of the things that they speak about because like. I grew up in a small town, so like a lot of technological advancements come late to small towns, right? Yes. Uh, Even music, um, clothing styles, yeah, um, music, um, any anything like that, anything that comes out, and now things come out, everybody gets it because you got the internet, everything's right there. Yeah, social media and yeah. just made it connectivity, and then, then like then you had to wait until somebody played it on the radio, or yeah. I guess you go to you know record stores and buy the album, but you wouldn't necessarily buy something you didn't really know. You know, it was I guess people did, and that's how you, you yeah. No, social media has definitely increased the connectivity of of the world. It's, yeah, it's crazy because it social is. media. You're right, plays a huge part because uh, even because yeah, can't like even even before uh, social media, right? Like. If you're a small town or if you're in a small population surrounded by like a bigger city, it's one thing. But like, even like when the biggest city is Kansas City, Kansas City's not really wasn't really known for anything. But like, so yeah. Uh, but the world seems to be like catching up. America seems to be catching up, like because of social media, and the world seems to be kind of catching up. Yeah. And, like, and, yeah. Social media is. And been think about up. people. I wonder if people in like real underdeveloped countries are or if they're still caught in that i'm sure there's some that are still caught in that you know there's people that don't have phones they don't have social media yeah like i think i like mean people in like um i don't know like just for example like haiti you know they keep having those earthquakes and stuff like that and i don't think they're doing very good down there um and i guess we would know. countries in africa possibly um yeah. countries in asia some there's some maybe in asia um but just you know underdeveloped countries where they don't have full on internet everywhere where people don't have a cell phone. Every person doesn't have a cell phone, probably. Do you, you know, think those probably people still caught back in time? Do you think those people are more or less happy than you are right now? Mm. That's a great question because that brings up the like the Sentinelese people, like the the undiscovered or not undiscovered, but 
tribes that don't want any association with society that just stay by themselves. And I said the one time, I said, I bet they're happy motherfuckers. I bet they are happy. <laughs> now, I have been all that bullshit to deal with. But, you know, what do you, think that is? you never know what you say. Oh, so why do you think that is? Do you think, do you think, do you think it's out of fear of the unknown? Do you think there's something they're protect? Like, why do you think it that, why do you think that they react uh, with hostility oh. towards? I think it's, it's both. I think it's fear of the unknown. And I think there's, they're protecting something. I think they're protecting their their own society and their way of life. Somehow they must know, I, but they don't really know. So they know there's something frightening out there and they don't want any part of it, I think. It's crazy because you can look around at other people and it's like you, like looking at them, you should be able to tell that like the way you live isn't, isn't re- like just because you live that way doesn't mean that it's the only way, like, there's other lifestyles, but it's difficult for people to comprehend it in the way in the way that it needs to be because, uh, I mean, I guess indoctrination. Indoctrination and is really powerful. People are narrow-minded, and you know what? What like when I started traveling, I've traveled quite a bit in my life, and when I started traveling, it opened opened my mind up so damn much to other cultures. And now, you know, I think other cultures are so interesting. I love traveling. Um, I think that that if people traveled more and could see all of that, they'd be a lot more intelligent and at least more open-minded to things, you know? Yeah, there, man. But yeah, nowadays, again, like these days, there's so much like information that like, and people believe if you like, so have, are you familiar with The Onion? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, The Onion for anybody who may not know, the Onion is a is a is a like a satire or a, a parody uh, production company who they make videos that are like outrageously untrue, but could also could also like play out as a real life scenario, and they do them as like newscasts. They have newscasts, like real sarcastic kind of too. Yeah, like extremely sarcastic, but sarcastic enough to where like you could truly believe, and they look professional, right? The Onion is, is it living like Gonzo journalism. Uh, well, no, because like they tell you, like they tell you, like they make it known that they're just having fun, that it's jokes and whatnot. Because it's fake, right? I think Gonzo. But, is real. but Actually, Gonzo. yeah, people will cut clips, or if you're not, if you're not aware enough, like you could think it's real because they do it like it's, but it's it's because it's entertaining, right? But they're living proof that like all you, if you look credible, people will believe anything you say, right? Like right. anything. And and if it so if it presents itself right, and that's why I'd be trying to tell people like you have no idea like someone could be looking you straight in the face and everything coming out of their mouth could be a complete lie, but you would have yeah. no clue. Like teachers as well and politicians and and people just it's very difficult to find pe- to find people who tell the who 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 only tell the truth. But the way you can tell is uh the way you can tell is if people are honest with you. Even in like, even in, in like darker times, right? People who are consistent. I think it's a waste. Of I money. will say this: telling the truth is actually is an is an actual skill, right? Like to actually tell the truth, because even if like even if you're telling somebody something and you have no intent of lying, you could still be like. So when I say also telling the truth, I like to like like I your sound quality just switched. Oh, how about now? Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Yeah, so like we mentioned, like like we mentioned earlier, I, I generally try and speak in things that can be disputed and argued with. That's what. All right, cool. Well, folks, I think we are done for the night. Us, us night owls. I think it's actually morning by now, right? <laughs> so, um, we're gonna wrap up this podcast. Thank you all so much for listening to our show, and uh, please check out our website at societaldeconstruction.com and rate and follow us. And while you're in there, go to our review page, please. Leaving us a review helps us improve the podcast for your listening pleasure. Check out, have you checked out the website? I have. I have. Yeah, yeah it's a work in progress. I'm still doing it's a little bit good. on it. But, I yeah. like it. It's cool. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. This was great. Yeah, and um, I'll talk to you soon, man. Cool. Be easy. All right. You too. Have a great night. Good day. Yeah, sure. Bye-bye. Sure. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for y'all listening to SDP episode 13. I just have one more treat for y'all. Please excuse my laryngitis. It came back. Um, We have the single that God 
released today on the 31st, his new single, The Song Forever.